What's going on, everybody? It is Friday, March the 19th, and that means it's time for my news radar. As always, do consider becoming a member by clicking the join button down below as this channel is community supported. Thank you. So let's kick off this episode with probably the most interesting bit of news I've saw in a few days. So Facebook Reality Labs are working on some pretty crazy stuff. Now, if you don't know, Facebook does own Oculus, the Oculus Rift, all of that stuff. So they've been, they've been working on virtual reality for a while, and their reality labs are kind of where this stuff is going on. This bit of news I've got for you here today is a video that they have just released about something they're experimenting with that's going to be a function in augmented reality because Facebook seems to believe, as a lot of people seem to believe, that augmented reality is going to be really big in the future. You're going to wear a pair of glasses like this with a little HUD, a little heads-up display, and you're going to be able to do all sorts of crazy things in the world with simply this and, in the instance of this Facebook, video here, simply something on your wrist. So let's jump over here and I will show you what I'm talking about. So they start off here by talking about this wrist mounted, it's a bracelet sort of thing. And on the other side, there appears to be sort of a screen there. And you'll notice it's got a kind of odd looking design. And that is because there are a lot of haptics in this wrist wearable, not only to vibrate, but to also squeeze to simulate different motions. But the big selling feature of what they're doing here is they're going to actually try to tap into your neurons firing. So the idea would be, yeah, you're going to move your hand around or move your arm, move your fingers, whatever, but it's going to be intercepting the electrical impulses from your brain down your spine and over to your hands. It's going to intercept that impulse and it's going to read it and then that's going to be mapped to an action that will take place in augmented reality. Now there's a lot going on there. It's really, really interesting. And obviously just for the idea of walking around with your heads up display and you're interacting with things that you're seeing in the world around you, much like someone who's suffering from some sort of hallucinogenic psychosis, but to you, you'll be seeing all sorts of cool things happening and you'll be interacting with these things with this bracelet on intercepting these neurons. I also want to point out that for people that may be disabled in some way, that can't move around well, but they can still maybe fire the neurons, you know, maybe that's something that could be really beneficial in that regard as well. And so that is exactly what they're talking about here. They're talking about this ability to track a neuron as it very slowly leaves your brain. And of course, if your neurons fire this slowly, these impulses move that slowly, boy, that'd be really hard to get anything done throughout the course of the day, uh, wouldn't it? But of course, that's not how that works. It moves much, much more quickly than that. And this little bracelet will be able to intercept that pulse and will then be able to map that pulse to an action in augmented reality. So you can see here, she's making these very slight, very small movements. And of course, all of these movements can be mapped to something in AR. As she sits here, you know, she's seeing these screens in front of her face that of course, no one but her is able to see. And she's moving through these widgets and she's looking at her messages and her calendar and doing all sorts of things like that. He's unlocking things by clicking his fingers together. And again, all powered by this bracelet. So in regards to haptic feedback, it's not as simple as just having this thing vibrate as they show here as this lady is pulling back on the string on this bow the bracelet is actually squeezing her wrist to simulate the the tension in that string and of course they give lots of examples here of what you could potentially do this lady looks rather perplexed by this lamp before she realizes she can turn it on with the motion of her hand she's now swiping around on her other hand to change things the brightness so i think one of the coolest things here is what they're showing right now and this involves some real deep learning so this person is typing on a keyboard that is not there and i know we've seen this before with the little thing you put on your table and it shines the keyboard onto the table and then you type on that that's not what's happening here this thing is actually tracking the neurons being fired out of your brain and each little twitch is being translated into a keystroke on a keyboard and it's going to be able to learn exactly what you want it to do each little twitch little movement is going to be translated so that it will eventually learn exactly how you want it to behave while typing thereby creating a keyboard that you can type with crazy fast and if someone else tried to use that same keyboard that it created for you it would be terrible 
because it's all about what you needed to do. It's learn your neurons, and that's pretty freaking cool. Maybe slightly creepy in some ways, but still pretty cool. So let's briefly talk about Windows 10X. So there was a lot of news earlier on in this year that Windows 10X will be launching in the first part of 2021. Well, and if you look at your uh, your handy dandy watch, you'll see that it is now middle of March and Windows 10X has not come. Well, that is because we now do have news from Windows Central stating that we are looking at closer to later this year, the second half of 2021, because this thing was delayed. We thought it was done. We thought it was ready. Turns out, it was not ready. So this article is written by the one and only Zach Bowden of, like I said, Windows Central. He said, according to his sources, earlier this year, the company, Microsoft, decided to push the launch of Windows 10X back a bit more to ensure the product is ready and robust for a smooth release. He says, quote, I believe Microsoft is now aiming to sign off on, sh on a shipping build of Windows 10X in late spring and hopes to have the first single screen PCs to begin shipping later in the second half of this year. Of course, Windows 10X is what the maybe vaporware, hopefully it's still coming, uh, Surface Neo, the dual screen computer, basically take a Surface Duo and make it a whole lot bigger. That is what Neo is going to be running. And Neo's been delayed in large part because, from what I understand, they're focusing on the single screen experience on Windows 10X and they're pushing back the dual screen experience. I'm still very excited to see what Windows 10 looks like in the wild, what kind of devices we're going to be able to see on this thing. He does mention also here that if you're wondering if an extra time will allow them to add Win32 app support back into Windows 10X, uh, that is not going to be happening at launch. They're going to be using this Windows Virtual Cloud PC stuff instead because they can have you pay a subscription fee for that instead. And let's close off today with some news about Samsung foldables. One of the things that I see all the time when I talk about the Z Fold 2 are two things. One, some people think it's ugly. I don't agree with that. I think it looks fine, but that can be your opinion. That's fine if you think it's ugly. And two, people are worried that it is too fragile. Now, what I see the most is people say, oh, it's got this plastic screen. Of course, the screen is ultra thin glass. It is not plastic. And in fact, the Z Fold 2 has been shown to be much more durable than I think people realize and much more durable than the original Z Fold, which broke constantly, causing them to have to push back the launch and launch it again. And da, 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 da. But that has soured a lot of people on the device. People most a lot of people think it's just this fragile, clunky looking device. Well, we have some news here about the Z Fold 3 and the Z Flip 2 about what we're going to be looking at here. And what we're expecting from these leaks is, for one, a handful of new colors, which I think will be cool because right now you can only get the Z Fold in black in that kind of rose-ish, copperish color, which I think looks okay. I opted for black. I mean, maybe I should have done that copper color because it's in a black case anyways, but I think there's something cool, nice, sleek about, I don't think anyone's ever called this thing sleek before. Maybe it's sleek when it's this way, but it's not sleek when it's this way. But I think there's something cool about the minimal black on black on black look, which I do quite like, but it'd be cool if you could get green, beige, maybe light violet would be pretty cool as a look for the Z Fold. And then the next thing that I think is going to be a really big deal is that the Z Fold 3 will likely become the first of their foldable phones to offer some degree of water resistance. Now they're not saying there's gonna be an IP rating, which is the, that's the standard. That's where, you know, this thing, you put it through a series of tests and then you can call it, oh, it's IP68 or it's IP67, whatever. They're not necessarily going to do that, but they will be in some way splash resistant. So you're not gonna be dropping your Z Fold into a pool or, or drop it into a lake and recover it 11 months later, like apparently you can an iPhone 11. But for it to be splash resistance, I think that would be obviously a good step in the right direction. I am personally not worried at all when it comes to the Z Fold 2 in terms of just day-to-day -day usage. Is my screen going to scratch? Well, so far, the answer to that question has been a resounding no. The screen is still exactly as pristine as it was the day that I got it. It looks great, it works fine. What I do worry about more, if I worry about anything durability-wise, is more to do with water. I was walking around the neighborhood just the other day, as I like to do, go for a nice walk. It's a nice, pretty day out, you know, and it begins to drizzle. And I think to myself, well, I'm not going to use my phone right now. I can't have my phone out. It wasn't a hard downpour, 
But it was in my head, you know, I'm thinking, this is not waterproof. I don't know how this is going to work. It's in a case, you know, will that case keep some stuff from getting in there further? Maybe it'll help out a little bit. Hope it will, but it would be really good to have some proper, at least some splash resistance. So guys, that is all the news I have for you today. So be sure to check back every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the next news radar. If you're looking for a cool way, maybe to support the channel, I don't know, maybe go over to the shop link or merch store link, which is in the description. Consider buying a pretty freaking sweet Stay Nerdy My Friends shirt, which feels great. It's a great quality shirt. I'm really happy with it. I want you guys to know something real quick. I ordered some merchandise from another group and it sucked. It didn't feel good. I didn't want to release it. I ordered from another group and these guys came in. The material is soft. You'll love it. It feels great on your skin, you know, if you like that kind of thing. It feels good. There's mugs. There's all kinds of things. So you can go grab your merchandise from that store down below. And even if you don't want to say scary if literal on your chest and confuse the crap out of everybody around you, stay nerdy, my friends. That's a cool thing, right? Everybody likes, you know, being nerdy. is like mainstream now. Maybe get it on a mug. It'd be pretty cool and it would help me out a little bit and it'd be a cool thing to do. So like I said, stay tuned for the next news radar and until next time, stay nerdy my friends. <laughs>